Okay, it's the next morning. It's dawn. I had to put a little bit of a plastic cover on the top just so that the uh, rim wouldn't dry out quicker than anything else. And it looks like we're fairly dry. I mean, not dry, but uh, leather hard. Uh, we've stiffened up a little bit overnight. And what we're going to do, uh, first we're going to take the uh, shield off because we're going to put a larger piece of uh, or a larger pad in because that room is pretty big. And, oh, yeah. We've got to cut the thing away right from the bat first. Which is unusual because the birds really start making their happy no morning sound uh, just at dawn. It looked like they were about a half an hour later, maybe 15 minutes late. So I sat outside waiting for them to begin, and it was uh, it was this really beautiful sound. This one bird off in the distance started, and uh, and then another one and another one. And after a little while, the whole, the whole forest is filled with the sound of birds ecstatic that they made it through another night. That's what I think they feel. So basically I'm just going to cut this piece away from the old bat with the wire. Put the new bat, or the bigger bat, up on top, pick this thing up, and flip it. That seems simple enough, huh? Pop the old bat loose. And we have the bowl upside down, ready to uh, First we have to find our indexing holes. They're in there somewhere. I know there. There's one. There's the other. Okay. Putting a finger in and finding that the bowl is way off center. So slide it over in the center. seems to be one of those bowls where everything's just going right. Now we've got to find a piece of clay that we can work with. I'm going to use some of uh, the old uh, Laguna Hills clay. here. And they have this fancy new uh, equipment that I uh, that I experienced oops, that I experienced in uh, in this little pottery class I took a, oh, a couple months back to you know basically I was trying to figure out how to do uh, glazes and and I got some really good uh, good glaze tips. But uh, she had this really neat little fancy uh, um, thing that centered the bowl and held it in place at the same time. And I thought, wow, that's really cool. I'm going to go get one of those. And it was like 250 bucks for this little piece of plastic. I went, get out of here. So uh, we go back to the old style of rolling up, uh, rolling up wads of clay. And uh, 
that works just fine. Um, let's get a little water on this or else it won't hold. To the bat, push it up against the piece a little bit, and that will hold it in place without any problem. Now, the problem with having an extra large uh, uh, bat is, uh, of course, the catch is no longer in place, so I have to just be a little more careful about where I go with the clay as I trim it off. So I just have to kind of grab it and uh, and put it away. I think we should start a new bucket. Okay, so, so we got a pretty thick area right in here, so we're probably going to want to yank off a bunch of uh, clay off of this edge here. And normally, if I was throwing a smaller bowl, I would just crank this thing up and, and zip off the clay. But uh, I don't want a bunch of clay all over the floor. And so I'm kind of taking my time and going slow. Let's use a smaller tool also. Okay, we got the beginnings of a foot going here. Bring this in a little bit. Trim off some excess off of the edges here. This is where the 
bowl usually carries all of its weight. And pulling off a bunch of clay off of this area here is a good thing. Because the lighter the bowl, the better. now. Well, maybe you can't, but uh, the birds are making their sound. And up here in the forest, there's thousands, all different kinds, making all kinds of different sounds. And they're all happy to be alive. Okay, that sounds a little better. Now we've got a pretty fat uh, foot here, but uh, you know, that's not a bad thing. Still got uh, some outside work to do here. <clears throat> Although not too much. Just trying for a contour. this bowl weighs. Move a bunch of stuff out of here. <clears throat> oh, no, it's very light. Nice. Okay. So, let me just clean up a little bit of the clay off the ground here. Uh, I don't do it while it's wet. You know, just turn the powder and then it becomes a disaster on the floor. So, we've got the, uh, the foot, we've got the shape of the, of the bowl, and the shape looks pretty good. So now I'd say we uh, come in and do just a little bit of texture in the bowl. I always like to do just a bit. It kind of gives it uh, a nice feel. And uh, we'll take it over to the texture bench uh, to do that. Be right back. Okay, we're over onto the texture bench. And uh, so what I like to do is um, find a place, and I don't know if you can see it or not, but there's a place where the uh, where the trimming tool stopped, and there's like a little line that goes along the top edge there, and then of course there's a second line here that kind of goes along that edge too. So I'm going to use those two lines and uh, and begin my texturing that way. I do need this, a pair of glasses, and I didn't bring them, so I'm going to have to go find them. 
Okay, we're back. Now, drop down so that I can get into a good position to do this. A nice, comfortable position because I'm going to be here for a little while. You know what? I, I sometimes use this tool here, but I kind of like this narrower texture. So, uh, I'm going to come in with a little bit narrower tool. Let's see what we can come up with. Just dig in and make a single line and go right next to it and do the same thing and just keep working my way around. And the clay at this point is very soft and very pliable. Looks like a little bit further down on these two. So it's easy to do this sort of thing. Now a little later on, even later on today, it would be almost impossible to dig in this deep. So just continue to index around. And as you can see, <coughs> it's going to take a while. So I'm going to save you the uh, boring details and we'll uh, come back at the end. Okay, we've got all the fluting done and notice that there's a bunch of little uh, little things left on there, little squigglies. And I just kind of leave them there because if you try to get them off, you end up scraping it. But as the piece dries, it, they just kind of flake off anyhow. So it's better uh, that I not, in a sense, contaminate the design by trying to get them off because sometimes they'll stick and other times they'll break off in an odd way so it's best just to kind of leave them alone <clears throat> but we can get rid of all of this stuff now so everything is good a little bit of kind of rounding off edges a little bit and I think we've got ourselves a bowl. I got one last thing to do. sense the fun part. Let's sign my name. And maybe let's come in a little closer for this. Okay. Bring it in a little closer. How about that? Okay. Quick signature. Nick. the 13th year so spin that around there we go and uh, I think we've got ourselves a pot bring this back and we're set so we come back I've got just a little bit of uh, kind of a messed up edge on top here from having it on the on the uh, on the bat upside down so I'll just come back in and smooth this off just a little bit just with a wet sponge just kind of smooth those lines down now of course the the glaze will take care of most of that but but interestingly enough 
the glaze tends to pull away from the rim and that's why you get some real interesting color changes on a lot of rims is because the glaze just because of gravity the glaze will pull away from the rim so if the rim isn't real finished oftentimes it'll be a bit of a problem and then uh, there is this other approach and I can't find it right now but sometimes I'll get a uh, a uh, little piece of chamois and run it over this edge to kind of smooth out the the roughness but actually with fingers it works pretty good too get some of the grog off of the uh, off of that edge All right, that looks pretty good.